Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and I'm down in Dartmoor at the moment. A very damp environment, quite interesting and uh, we're in a very beautiful woodland and I'm down here with Zed from Zed Outdoors and also John Mack who's a very established carver and he set up a camp for us very kindly and we're down here for a few days where he's really just going to be teaching us um, some of his techniques of his trade and I thought I'd film it for you in a bit of a video diary so I hope you enjoy the video. So you can see this is the setup I'm running behind me. I've got my DD 3x3, Coyote Brown, Ticket to the Moon Hammock, Snug Pack Softy 4, which is quite a warm bag for this time of year, but it's the coldest bag I've got uh, with a sleep mat. And I've got my pack hanging here. Pretty nice setup. We're expecting some heavy rain and maybe some thunderstorms. So I've gone for the diamond setup, which gives me a little bit more cover on the edges and stops rain creeping in and getting to these lines here and just gradually turning the hammock into a bit of a sponge. So it's quite a nice little setup, but it should see me through the uh, next few days.
morning guys, beginning of day two and it's a really beautiful morning. We had some rain last night but barely rain at all, just a little bit of drizzle and it was a nice dry warm night, very mild at this time of year so quite nice over here. But the woods are uh, really singing this morning and I got up quite early and um, did a bit of work on my spoon. You can see I've finished it off almost now. A lovely bit of older with some um, coloration in it and it's come out quite nicely but today I'm going to do a little bit more carving and make a hopefully a nice looking bowl but I managed to get the fire going this morning there were some embers left from the oak I put on last night and with a bit of dry gorse and some dead standing hazel had a fire going in no time which was great and the guys are putting breakfast on for me now but we've been joined by Chris Grant and Chris Grant is a incredibly skilled knife maker he's been showing us his knives this morning and uh, they are really beautiful so I just wanted to show you a few of those now So we've got a couple of Chris's knives here, you can see that they're absolutely beautiful. Some of them are prototypes, some of them are near completion and he's been spending quite a few years in um, testing these designs with John Mack and uh, really putting them through their paces. So Chris, what, what have we got here? Um, we'll start with the one next to it if I can. Yeah. Um, this is the Mac Chris, which is um, essentially a carving knife that's been reverse engineered into a bushcraft knife right which is the reason that it's full tang okay um, this was the end result of um designing and uh, proof testing a design and we reached the point where we'd had we had a narrowed tang version of this knife with almost an identical profile and a slimmed down tip and we just said i just said no it's something's not right so what we did was we decided to split the design in two so we have a reverse engineered carving knife, the full size that John wanted it, and the one that he started with here right. is the result. So we split the design in half. The original design was a pin tang, a narrow okay. tang, which is what this knife has resulted yeah. in. So rather than throwing the kitchen sink in, we split them in two. This is much lighter. It's essentially the same design. And if you turn the edge down, you'll see that the point's tapered there. Okay which yeah. is really just for delicate cuts, mostly for chip carving, but okay. if you need to get into a space to do any detail carving animals or whatever. Yeah, that's what that's it's for. And this is, this is birch, is it? This is a birch bar that's been stabilised with methyl acrylate resin. Okay. Yeah. And what, what metal is this? This is a 52-100 ball bearing steel. And you, we were talking about it earlier, you, you really rate that as the... Aye. Um, absolutely. Uh, years ago, um, I was mostly working in silver steel at the time, that was my steel of choice, but it's only available in round bar, okay. you have to forge it. Um, and I was given massive bearing races by a friend of mine, and had great fun forging them down. It's difficult stuff to forge, but when, when you get it down, it's, it's great. But it's, it's wonderful because rarely do you get a keen edge with really good edge retention and edge strength. It's almost like the, the holy grail and it's um, it's not easy, it certainly wasn't easy to find when I was first working with it and I managed to locate a supply of it. Um, it's, uh, it's actually German, it's, it's okay. German in origin. It's not, it's not made here actually anymore, but um, it's, it's for me um, as an ex wood carver, wood worker and um, as, as a blade maker in terms of quality of edge, edge sharpness, edge retention, meaning how long it'll hold the edge, but also edge strength and how durable the edge is. Yeah. It's the perfect um, uh, unity of the trinity, if you like. Right. And uh, I'll, I'll just say, these are not the standard sheaths. These are uh, special ones for John. I John, see. John likes this full cover. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, noticed he wears those on his yeah, belt quite a bit. Purely to go in a cargo pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, they're absolutely lovely. Yeah. Have a look at a couple of others. Thanks. So we've got a couple of other knives here, and these ones look uh, look really beautiful. Chris, t tell us a bit about these ones. Sure. Uh, we'll start with the lower one. This one. Um, this is my Cairngorm model. Um, it's not per se a bushcraft knife. I just call it a utility knife. It's, okay. It's for everything. You know, it's it's uh, you can whittle with it. It's good enough to slice with, but it's got a nice strong back in it. The original spec is actually for a six mil blade, but this is a five mil blade. Okay. And um, the materials are it's um, Vinland Damasteel, which is a pulver scented. It's a powder metallurgical combination of two steels. Okay. And um, that are actually cast together. There's no forge welding in this, and once it's cast in a big round. Uh, 
layered uh, uh, cylinder, but like a Swiss roll. Yeah. It's then reduced, it's then forged down. I see. So you have here um, two different types of metal that are, there's no welds in, they are cast, they are fused together at birth, if you like. Yeah. And um, this is a, like a special edition Cairn Gorm, that's what I call it after the mountain. Um, so in the regular model it would be 6mm, but there was no 6mm in this dama steel. As standard the tang's tapered for okay. weight redu reduction, it's just nice. It's a pretty flat handle. Yeah, um, very comfortable. Yeah, it's for me, you know, uh, ergonomics was, was my thing back yeah, in the day. Yeah. This style of knife uh, originates with um, a gentleman called Lars Felt and Falkenhoven. Okay. It's, you could say it's my version of it. Um, I tend to see it as um, the design is uh, inspired by by those, and I have tweaked it to the point where the, the profile no longer resembles it. And um, certainly the materials and the finish I'm doing are kind of a step forward of of, of these two knives. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's more or less become its own thing. But um, I was really in love with the flat grind. My own one actually has a convex edge, but I see. Um, I was in love with the flat grind, and I thought I'm going to try this handle and just find out how awful it is and how bad the bristles are. <laughs> but it, it works, it's yeah. comfortable. It, actually it is works. actually very comfortable, you could use yeah. that all day. And I'll just say that's stabilised the uh, alder burr. That's alder burr, isn't which it? Which was sourced by me. Yeah, you went and cut that down out in the it, woods? It was actually cut, it was lying by the side of a road. Oh the really? Yeah, it was just lying there. So oh, what a I find. And um, the small one, this is actually a set for a gentleman. Um, and, That's uh, beautiful, that one. This is, uh, again, the same materials, Vinland Damasteel Stainless Damascus, and that alder burr actually came from my garden. <laughs> um, both of these are stabilised uh, with methyl acrylic resin, so they're essentially impregnated with plastic. Um, you can still have the, all the qualities of wood, but they're waterproof. You could do everything with that. Absolutely. Well, the, Sean Mulhall, the gentleman that designed this, um, you know, he wanted this go-to skin and knife, something that was large enough to do a deer, yeah. something that was yeah. delicate enough to be comfortable to do rabbits, something light. So again, it has the tapered tang. It's made from four mil stock, but it's really nice and thin. And it's, it's got what you call a full distal taper, so it thins right to the point you've got a nice delicate point. But you could do an delicate. awful lot with that. Yeah, a lot of people pick it up, like um, uh, folk that um, folk that, that are not nice people pick it up and say, oh, it's, it's really nice, I like how wide and how round yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I've got a friend that's a, a stalker, and he said, you know, that that's all you need, you know. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a knife people keep coming back to for that purpose. So, um, in addition to the other two, these are, um, this one is not in full production because I'm still currently sourcing the metal to use uh, for the standard version, but um, this one is in sort of semi-production. And I That's use the, the lighter steel in the alloy RWL34 for the, the These sheaths are amazing as well. Yeah. You've got this part here, you were saying yeah. it's for paracord. Yeah, um, it was like, uh, I kind of adapted from the old mountain man sheath. It was actually a sheath I made for myself. Yeah. And the fellow saw it and he said, I, I like that. And the next thing I know there was paracord around it. And you, you can carry, I think, two metres of paracord oh, around nice. it. Oh, nice. Um, and it looks nice and all the rest of it. Yeah, nice. yeah. And then, um, I'll just say, um, I, not everybody does this, this is my own method of fixing. I think it looks rather neat to have brass in here. Yeah. And you'll notice that the D-ring, you know, it, it fits there, it doesn't hang loose, it clips it, it in there. It clips in the nice back, thing. I like that, yeah. I just noticed um, it, yeah. This is a type of fixing called a Chicago screw, Okay. which is essentially a screw together rivet. And, and, and they are designed to be removed, but I super glue them to, to fix it. And the reason for that is if the D-ring, if somebody decides they don't want the D-ring, that can be removed and replaced. I see. Rather yeah, than having really to cut, cut yeah, the whole yeah. sheath open, so it's really just for versatility. But I think it looks pretty neat. I as think well. it looks really nice. Um, yeah. On the inside, uh, is it um, sort of depressed in, so it doesn't yeah, touch it's, the blade? It's countersunk and it's yeah. rebated, so the blade will never touch it. Yeah. Touch okay. It. I can actually yeah. see that by looking in it. You probably won't be able to see it on the camera though. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Uh, uh, thanks very much I mean, for talking no us problem. through these. They're, they're beautiful. A pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for being interested.
Happy Camper. Just go out. 